Hey guys, it's your girl Kylie and welcome back to my vlog. So for today's video, we are going to talk about microbiology. I know that you're all familiar with this since it talks about the small organism inside and outside our body. So microbiology, micro, which means um, it cannot be seen with our naked eye. It can only be seen through the aid of a microscope bio which means life and logi which means the study of so all in all microbiology is the study of microbes microbes can be seen everywhere okay then microbes that can cause disease are called pathogens and microbes that does not cause disease are called non-pathogens so since we were a child, I think you're, you already know or microbiology has already an impact on your life because from your mother saying that don't touch that because you do not wash your hands first, you know that it has germs. So our mother was our first microbiology instructor. So um, why do we study microbiology? Is it really important? Yes. It is important to study microbiology because it, um, what I've said earlier, it is, the, it is the study of the microorganisms which lives inside of us and of course outside. That will be discussed later, so just listen. Microbiology is the study of microbes. Microbes can be classified into two, which is the acellular and the cellular. First, let us tackle about a cellular. A cellular can be called infectious particles. It is comprised of virus and prions. So let's take an example as the virus. Um, one common virus that we're all familiar with, since it is timely relevant in our country, which is the Philippines, um, the coronavirus. So I know you all know that. Next is um, cellular. So cellular can also be called microorganisms and it is also it is also divided into two which is the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. So prokaryotes when we talk when we say prokaryotes it lacks a true nucleus. And under the prokaryotes we have the archaea, bacteria, cyanobacteria. So let's take an example as the bacteria. So there are good bacteria and bad bacteria that can go in our body or that is in our body next is we have the eukaryotes when we talk about eukaryotes it has or it is true nucleus and it is composed of algae protozoa fungi so let's take an example of fungi it can be seen into mushrooms yes you can see fungi and also algae. Now let us discuss about eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells belongs to the domain eukaryota. Eukaryotic cells has a true nucleus. From the word itself, eukaryotic u, eu, which means true, and karyo, which means in a nut or nucleus. That's why it is called eukaryotic because, as what I've said earlier, it has true nucleus Be and also their DNA is enclosed by a nuclear membrane cell membrane the cell is enclosed and held intact by the cell membrane which is also referred to as the plasma cytoplasmic or cellular membrane structurally it is a mosaic composed of large molecules of proteins and phospholipids the cell membrane is like a skin around the cell, separating the contents of the cell from the outside world. The cell membrane regulates the passage of nutrients, waste products, and secretions into and out of the cell. Because the cell membrane has the property of selective permeability, only certain substances may enter and leave the cell. 
the cell membrane is similar in structure and function to all of the other membranes that are found in eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells possess a true nucleus. The nucleus controls the functions of the entire cell and can be thought of as the command center of the cell. The nucleus has three components, which is the nucleoplasm, chromosomes, and a nuclear membrane. Nucleoplasm is the gelatinous matrix or base material of the nucleus. The chromosomes are embedded or suspended into the nucleoplasm. The membrane that serves as a skin around the nucleus is called the nuclear membrane. It contains holes, which are nuclear pores, through which large molecules can enter and exit the nucleus. One fact is that a true nucleus consists of these three, as what I've said earlier, which is the nucleoplasm, chromosomes, and a nuclear membrane. Cytoplasm. This is where the cytoplasm is located. Cytoplasm is a semi-fluid, gelatinous nutrient matrix. Within the cytoplasm are found insoluble storage granules and various cytoplasmic organelles, including the ER or the endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, Golgi complexes, mitochondria, centrals, microtubules, lysosomes, and other membrane-bound vacuoles. Each of these organelles has a highly specific function and all of the functions are interrelated to maintain the cell and allow it to properly perform its activities. The cytoplasm is where most of the cell's metabolic reactions occur. The semi-fluid portion of the cytoplasm, excluding the granules and organelles, is sometimes referred to as cytosol. Endoplasmic reticulum as you can see on the illustration, there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. We have the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum. This rough appearance is caused by the many ribosomes attached to the outer surface of the membrane, while the smooth in the plasmic reticulum, it is not attached to the ribosomes. Ribosome. Ribosome is located here. Within a cell, ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis. Lysosome. Lysosome is located here. Lysosomes are small vesicles that originate at the Golgi complex. They contain lysozyme and other digestive enzymes that break down foreign materials taken into the cell by phagocytosis. By phagocytosis, it is the engulfing of large particles by amoebas in certain types of white blood cells. Mitochondria are the mitochondrion, which is located here. Mitochondria can be considered power plants or energy factories within a cell. And I know we're all familiar with mitochondria since elementary because when we hear this word, the one thing that comes into our mind is powerhouse of the cell. Yes, you're right. Mitochondria is the energy necessary for cellular function and is provided by the formation of high energy phosphate molecules such as DATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP molecules are the major energy carrying or energy storing molecules within the cell.